And ladies and gentlemen, this is the most exciting part of my day. We are stalking the great monarch butterfly with the help of pretty impressive people. My goodness, <laughs> Kyle, you give are. us a wave. <laughs> Kyle Shepard at the zoo and Kay Milam, who is the director producer of the Butterfly Trees. It's a new documentary that's winning awards internationally. Yes, and she's our hometown girl. Well, kind of, you were born in Houston, but you've been here for years. We're so proud of you, Kay. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. It's It's been quite a journey. If, uh, made many migrations at this point myself. <laughs> how, how many migrations have you made, Kay? It's been a, it's been a progress of, of a decade. I have been working on the film in my spare time for over a decade and wow. I don't know how many migrations per se, but I've definitely um, probably chased monarchs more than 50,000 miles at this point with my crew. Dear Lord. And um, made many trips back to Mexico and Canada and along the various stops in the United States along the way in between nice. and and so here yeah. we have this little guy and he is a summer monarch which means that he's probably only going to live a few short weeks oh no well we can learn a lot about butterflies and one of those things is that life is very fleeting and so live it well well, the allegories you tell in your movie are pretty amazing, and I love hearing things like that because um, just thinking that this beautiful creature only has a couple of weeks on Earth is, is quite profound. Well, the difference, though, between this and the monarchs that are born in the late summer, starting in August and September, this is a non-migrating monarch, but the, the uh, late summer monarchs are called the super generation and they actually live up to nine months and they migrate to a place that they've never been, which is why this creature is so extraordinary. So it's probably the eggs, the, the, the next generation from this one will be the migrants. You know, I think what's interesting is to know that, you know, you started out um, just thinking what a wonderful thing it would be to create this movie about uh, monarchs and I don't know that even you realize the social impact that this movie could have and the connection it could have to the way the world is is operating at this time well I think it's I think it's a timely film I certainly think that um, when I first started this film nobody was talking about being green and um, there, there weren't a lot of outlets for it, but now, of course, you know, between um, social media, Netflix, and those kinds of things, there's a lot of opportunity. But I mean, I just think that the butterflies, they're, they're, this journey is so incredible. I think that they're incredible metaphors for hope, that if a monarch, if a butterfly, if an insect this size can make this epic migration, then, you know, what does that mean for us? What can we humans do? And their metamorphosis process is just extraordinary and to think that this thing that like the egg is like the size of a pinhead. That's amazing. And that all the information that's inside of that egg somehow gets transferred into this butterfly that then migrates up to 2,500 miles away, depending upon where it's migrating from. Dear God, Kyle, I wanna, I wanna ask uh, you a question too. Yeah. Um, you're here at the Louisville Zoo and you do all of the PR for the Louisville Zoo and we appreciate everything, especially the fact that you let us come in today. No worries. This must be one of your most popular exhibits. Yes, it's our third year and it's back by popular demand. We've worked with uh, Blair over at uh, Idlewild Butterfly Farm and she helps us stock our butterflies. and. We started two years ago, and Kay came out to our first Flutterfest, which was our Flutterfest. I love that. Our butterfly release, and uh, I learned about her her documentary then, and I cannot wait to see it. Um, but yeah, it's backed by popular demand. We opened in the summer. It runs through September twenty second, and anybody can come in and see all kinds of butterflies. And we've got kind of a list of, of what will sort of rotate through this exhibit, and then there are also. Um, signage, uh, there's all kinds of signage around to indicate what kind of flowers that you can plant in your own garden to attract all these beautiful creatures. That's pretty cool. So let's talk about what we feed them, Kay. This is something that everybody can contribute to. Well, the really cool thing is that they use their proboscis um, to dip into flowers. And one of the things that's kind of fun is when you think about, you know, the, the, the cliche, we are what we eat. So. In other words, they're flying flowers in a way, right? <laughs> and so they use their proboscis, which is a curled up like drinking straw that goes into flowers. And this guy, his, his proboscis is kind of curled up tight. He's obviously not very thirsty, but I bet before we leave here, we'll find some nectaring monarchs. And, and this one, I don't know if he's gonna show, 
And by the way, Kay has explicit permission from Kyle yes. to touch the butterflies. Kay's an expert. Kay's <laughs> an expert. Nobody else gets a go. chance. So oh, it's kind of opening its wow. wings. And so you can tell that this is a male because he's got two spots on his lower hind wings there that indicate that he's a male. Wow. And the females actually will have thicker veins. This, this guy's like just resting. Oh, <laughs> that is so amazing to learn that. But when they're in the trees in Mexico, you can see how the underside is kind of this, this brown and not quite as, as bright as the outer part. Um, so when you first walk into these sanctuaries in, in Mexico and you don't even know that you're looking at butterflies, it looks like clumps of leaves. And um, so it can be really surprising that, uh, that these big, clumps of butterflies and, and sometimes the weight of the butterflies actually breaks the branches that's off of these 100 year old trees. Oh, that's so. amazing. So what is this thing that this plant that, that is, you know, hung up here at the zoo, is that milkweed too? No, <gasps> this isn't wings. milkweed, but, but milkweed is obviously a very, very important source for the monarchs. It's the only food that the caterpillars can eat. There's actually probably 120 different species of milkweed, but there's only about a dozen that the monarchs use. Um, here in Louisville, Kentucky, common milkweed is probably one of the better ones, um, but there's also other species, swamp milkweed and tropical milkweed and uh, butterfly weed that people can buy and plant. And I know that you can, the most important thing is if you get milkweed to plant in your yard, you have to make sure it's pesticide free. Yes. And that some of the commercial sellers of such products are not the best places to go because they may not use pesticides, but where they got them from may use pesticides, which will kill the caterpillars. And that would be a very sad thing. But Absolutely. places like Idlewild Butterfly Farm are really a great place to, to, to buy milkweed. And Okay, I gotta read you a couple things that people are saying because this is really cool. Oh, oh, here we go. There he go. Oh, look, he's gonna land. <gasps> try to. Wow, <laughs> that is so cool. He'll come back. Or he'll stay Let's there. Let's walk over there. Let's just walk yeah. over there. So, um, first of all, I just want you guys to know that we've got some great friends watching Joy Estes and Tom Boone, uh, Don Birch, Cheryl Smith. We appreciate you. And um, Byers is watching Carla Walker, Marty Blue. Hey, Marty, Kip Wilson, Rebecca Eves hey, of the Arrow Fund. Wow. Summer Dickerson says, I run a ministry that helps women get out of human trafficking. As a survivor myself, I know how important it is they have a safe place to heal, so we give them a safe place to live. We love butterflies, so we have to come there. So beautiful, they would love this. Is that not cool, Kyle? Yeah, beautiful. Awesome. Sharon Cecil says, be sure to give a link for this after this is aired. I want to share for sure. Absolutely. So uh, Sharon wants to know, does miracle Grow hurt butterflies? That's kind of an important thing to know. Might want to ask somebody who's an expert in pesticides and growing Ooh, stuff. Look, <gasps> there's, like, turn around and let's go oh, over where? here. Oh, yeah, you, oh my gosh, yes. look at this one. <gasps> okay. Kyle, do you have names for any of these butterflies? <laughs> it would be impossible, there's so many. How many well, do you, know, you have? What, what are the things that people do is, citizens can actively get involved in monarchs by tagging them and it's kind of like bird banding in That's a way hilarious um so but you could you only tag fall monarchs and what they do is that monarch watch you can order your tags and you'll want to be doing that about now and if you raise butterflies or if you find them in the wild you can apply a tag to a monarch and that tag has a number and if that monarch is seen nectaring along its migratory journey, or if it is found in Mexico, then they have specific data from where you tag the butterfly and where the butterfly was found and how many miles it actually migrated. But it's a really fun thing to do for school groups and um, individuals. And so citizen science is a great way. Now you can see this guy, his proboscis is unfurled and he's, drinking drinking Boy, out of no that flower kidding. like it's a milkshake that's amazing so let me ask you a question about butterflies do they have a powdery stuff on their wings that comes off or is that a moth they they all they do i mean a little bit but so there's when you tag them the tag actually will go right on this area right there that looks kind of like a mitten wow and you press down you take your tag and you press down 
for about two seconds. I don't have any tags to demonstrate, but we wouldn't want to be tagging these now. Um, but it doesn't affect their flight and it doesn't hurt them if it's done right. And okay, these kind, these butterflies here are not the ones that migrate though, right? No, not this time of year, but um, about, it's uh, mid-July, so in about, you know, six weeks, those will be the migrating monarchs. Oh my God. And for those of us in Louisville, Kentucky, um, if you look up in the sky pretty much any given day in September and early October, I, I see migrating monarchs. They'll all be flying through here. They'll all be going southwest. And it's just such a super cool thing. That is, and look at how tiny and narrow this thing is from the top. When you look up in the air, a lot of times all you see is the butterfly wings. But my gosh, to actually see the whole construction of a butterfly this close, what a great learning experience for I'm kids. I'm gonna tag on to what Kay was talking Hop about Hop in too. there if you're gonna so, tag um, on. I'm gonna tag on because yeah. at our Flutter Fest that we'll do on September 22nd. Yes. Oh, that's such oh, a yeah. great event. We'll have docents, our, which are our volunteer educators. They'll be tagging butterflies with the help of some families. And we'll tag about a thousand probably butterflies, and then we we have a butterfly release, and then they, we send them on their way to Mexico. And didn't they get? Didn't some of them get? They were found in Mexico. Yes. So we record the 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 little pro when you go through the project, you get your little numbers and all that, and they were found in Mexico. So we got a report back that I think three or four of them were found. Which so is amazing, and that's higher than the odds because out of all the tags, only one percent are actually found in Mexico. Wow. It's like, uh, I think maybe 200, they have 200,000 tags. So out of those 200,000 tags now, there's only one percent that get found. And the really cool thing about the whole tagging program is that it also helps the people in um, Mexico that find the tags because it gives value to the stewardship of the Mexican people because a lot of the males will die in Mexico after mating, and so the, the the locals will shuffle around on the forest floor to find the dead monarchs that have the tags. Wow! And they're buying the tags back from you know for five dollars each. Crazy. Which you know if they they find several of them, it certainly starts to become a significant source for the for the local people there, and gives value to their stewardship. It gives value to the butterflies. It's all very cool. So Anne says, the milkweed I have attracts so many butterflies. I love the bright orange color of milkweed and it comes back every year. Yes, it does. So once you plant it, that's it? For the most part, although I had a friend who, I was at her house yesterday in her garden and her hers didn't come back, but sometimes it usually does come back. So well, that's amazing. So, you the, know, one of the things that I think is lovely about butterflies, uh, Kay, is that people are using them more and more in place of rice at weddings and also at memorial services. Oh, I love so, the release such a, of butterflies. It's such a beautiful, beautiful thing to do is a memorial service. Uh, recently, a dear friend's mom passed, and so I, I took a, a butterfly basket with flowers, and um, we did a butterfly release, and the butterflies landed on the various participants in the memorial service, and it just, you know, it brought, it brings joy. Butterflies always bring joy. Yes. And if you plant flowers, they will come. And and to have butterflies passing through your life, and it's not just butterflies, it's all kinds of other pollinators too, bees and um, other, other insects and, when you think about it, one out of every three bites of our food comes from pollinators. And without pollinators, our food supply will be in various, have some very serious issues, but they're so beautiful and they're ethereal and they, they do no harm and all they really want is a pesticide-free, herbicide-free environment. And so for that reason, I would encourage people, I mean, not to use toxins on their lawn. And it's not just for butterflies, it's also for fireflies. Um, if you happen to have, um, if you use chemicals on your lawn, fireflies, they, they spend two years underground and those chemicals would oh, kill them. Oh, you'll kill them, And yeah. so it's just, um, I would rather have weeds than, than be killing you know, these beautiful creatures. Look, this one's back. Now, I know it's not your job to promote Idlewilds programs, but you told me something hilarious about bugs behaving badly. Oh, one of Blair, <laughs> Blair's businesses, idea. actually, it's a really good thing to know, is that you, she um, deals with, uh, like, management of various pests through other bugs. And so ladybugs eat bad bugs, and praying mantids eat some bad bugs. And 
And if your your garden is you know pesticide free, you can still let other creatures kind of help do the work for you as nature intended. Isn't that hysterical? So oh. the rain of look, the look monarch. Look at this. Now look at this. Now we got two oh going God. here. Okay, is, is there a possibility we might have something on camera we shouldn't show? <laughs> no, no, because okay. we have two males. Oh, okay. Every once in a while, two males Ooh. will get a little oh. get a little aggressive with each other. Do they really? Now, how do butterflies fight? They'll, they'll like do an aerial kind of twirl that, Isn't they'll, that interesting? they'll do kind of like this thing kind of more for you know territory and showing um, off females and yeah but they also do that playing and and butterflies will play I love and they that. will find themselves in these winds and eddies and different things now you can see this guy this is kind of an interesting thing so this guy has a couple little little uh, tatters back. on his wing yeah and monarchs are actually poisonous to most birds really and that's because milkweed has cardiac glycoids in it it's a toxin a, a plant with toxins in it Holy smokes. so for if you do have milkweed and you're using milkweed the one thing you never want to do is to touch your eyes you want to oh. make sure to wash your hands really really well oh my god and um because it's the the white sap um is poisonous had no and idea so it's poisonous to birds it's poisonous to humans it's poisonous and um and and the other thing too and like coming in a place like this you want to make sure you're not covered in bug spray because oh, yeah, you know bug spray sense. itself is also a toxin and um can you get him up on your finger I don't know. once again Kay has been given specific permission oh, to go. touch the butterflies when you come to the butterfly exhibit that's not allowed there's, so let's talk about the reign one. of the monarch real quick Kay there's because an... I want you to explain how they get from uh, Canada all the way to Mexico. So Gosh. it's basically an intergenerational relay. And wherever the monarchs are born in late August and early September, they're the ones that are the super generation and they're pr programmed to start migrating. And they make this epic trip from wherever they're born all the way down to their overwintering home um, in the states of Michoacan and Mexico. And most people think that they're going somewhere really warm and tropical, but actually it's a very cool environment. And it's got just the right amount of uh, humidity to keep the butterflies moist. And it's cool to keep them mainly dormant for the most of the um, overwintering season. And the difference between some of the butterflies that you'll see here, a lot of butterflies such as the swallowtails, they actually have a form of antifreeze in their bodies that wow. is in their chrysalids. So they can stand the winters, but the monarchs are a subtropical species, so they have to migrate, otherwise they will die. Um, That's hysterical. They have antifreeze and heart-stopping agents in them. <laughs> well, that too. And there's also the other interesting tidbit that I will say is that there are two proteins found in monarchs that um, actin and myosin, and those two proteins that are responsible for making their wings flap are the same two proteins that make our own human hearts beat. That's amazing. Okay, so Sharon says, why are those butterflies so tame where Kay can touch them so easily? <laughs> She's been training for weeks just for this shoot. <laughs> they're, they're in a controlled environment, but if you do come up on a butterfly, one tip that I will give you is that you shouldn't talk because the humidity from your breath will indicate to a butterfly that you're a predator. So. <laughs> Who knew? Something, Who knew? Well, you learn these things on location when you're filming with the world's foremost experts, and I'm sitting there talking, and and they They're say, like, "Shut up! Shut up! Yeah, don't talk. <laughs> you'll scare them off." The other, another interesting tidbit. I wish we could find somebody, but right, butterflies. Oh, look! Here, look! They taste with their feet. They do. That is how butterflies. All butterflies, they taste with their feet. That's amazing. Look at those and this, two beauties. Yeah, this is the one that's got its had its little tatters. Little oh, tatters I see on its that. Wings. Yeah. Did you get in a bar fight, little buddy? <laughs> Goodness gracious, it's so beautiful. Hey, Joe Johnston, glad that you're with us today. Pat Murphy, glad you're here too. Denise Frazier, James Green, Mark Smith, Maureen O'Keefe is watching. Welcome, Mo. Glad to have you with us at this beautiful day at the zoo. We're in the butterfly exhibit with the extraordinary Kay Milam, director producer of the Butterfly Trees. And she is uh, screening her show at the Flyover Film Festival. 
We're very next excited week. about that. You can get tickets still for next week at the Speed. Um, so talk to us a little bit about the film, Kay. This is a really exciting thing. We've drained all of your information about butterflies in the last 15 <laughs> minutes, but now we've got to promote your film. So it's a very, very personal project that I have spent over a decade of my life doing. I got bit by the bug, so to speak, and it just was one of these passion projects that I had to do. And so um, I started, I, I, one evening I just gathered all of my friends at a Mexican restaurant here in town. And I bet I know which one that was too. I bet you do. <laughs> and so I gathered all of my friends at this Mexican restaurant because I knew it was gonna be really, really hard. And so I talked about wanting to do this project. At the end of my speech, somebody picked up a plastic butterfly off a table and held it up and said, do I hear $100, $200? Oh. And this plastic butterfly auctioned for $1,000. Wow. And then it started raining and an umbrella auctioned for $1,200. And then the tortilla basket was filled with checks at the end of the night. That's amazing. And that was the beginning of the film. It was never intended to be a fundraiser, but sometimes love shows up. And I wanted to do this film in the very beginning because I feel like that there's so much we can learn from butterflies. We can. Um, they actually arrive in Mexico right around Day of the Dead. Really? And there's all this mythology um, surrounding butterflies from throughout the course of history. Uh, butterflies appear in art, ancient Egyptian art, and so many different things. And they're just such spiritual creatures. Uh, the whole transformation process, the fact that they they go from being like in this liquid state where their entire bodies are broken down and then they emerge 10 days later with wings and that they can fly. So Incredible. something that can only crawl that goes to flying. And of course this is for all butterflies. And one of the things that makes the monarch so spectacular is because of their migration. It's the largest, um, most epic insect migration on the oh planet. Oh my God. And then uh, somebody says, are you familiar with the Indian legend? If you whisper a wish to them, but she wants to know if her breath is harmful to the butterfly after what you it's, just told it's, it's us. Not, it's not harmful at all. It just means that they might fly off thinking that you're a predator. That's good. Oh, look, Kyle's good. whispering a wish to this She's butterfly whispering. right here. What are you wishing for, Kyle? You can't I'm tell. tell. You, you gotta keep it with the butterfly. Donna Star, Donna Schuster's watching. Hey, Donna. So let's walk back here and just check out some of these other extraordinary little creatures. Uh, what are the dark ones? They're different. There's from lots the of different ones. types of swallowtails that we have here. Um, they're they're definitely drinking up the nectar right here. And I'm not sure. I'm looking to see if I. Here's some milkweed right there. I love that tail. I mean, no wonder they call it a swallowtail. Swallowtail, yes. so extraordinary. The shape is completely different. And swallowtails are very, very common here in Kentucky and Louisville, so that's a cool thing. And, and I wanted to point this out. This yeah. is um, some tropical milkweed. And the reason I put my glasses on is just to see if there might be any eggs. Um, oh, they lay their eggs on the milkweed? They will lay their eggs on the underside of the milkweed, and the cool specks would be so tiny. You could barely see them. The other thing that I will often do, too, is like to look for caterpillars. You usually look for some chew marks, but, you know, I mean, the way nature works is that a, a female monarch will lay like approximately 400 eggs, and out wow. of those 400 eggs, only like a handful, like four or five, will survive to adulthood. And so it's a, it's a very fragile and precious life. I do not see any eggs, but uh, nor caterpillars at this point. But God, they fly right at you. It's so funny. It's like <laughs> they don't have any concept of danger. What are the natural predators of a butterfly, Kay? Well, there's I mean, a lot everything. of actually, um, there's tachnid flies. Ooh, look, we got chrysalises. Um, tachnid flies and wasps um, definitely attack butterflies, um, especially monarchs. They'll, they'll attack the caterpillars. Um, they're, even monarchs will eat their own eggs accidentally while they're gobbling down um, the milkweed. And so like, Monarch caterpillars, the interesting thing about them is that when they come out of their egg, they are so tiny. Huh? They are so tiny, teeny tiny. Um, they actually grow, it's comparative to a human newborn baby growing into a gray whale. Wow. So they gray 2, 000, grow 2,000 times their own size and they're eating machines. And so they eat, eat, eat. And sometimes they unfortunately will eat another egg on the milkweed plant as they're 
they're munching everything down. How long do they stay on the leaf before becoming a butterfly? Well, they, the egg gets laid and the egg stays in the egg stage for like a couple of days and then it, it, eats, it eats the eggshell it's, it's, um, for its first meal. It's this <laughs> convenient protein source. So it eats its eggshell and then starts eating the milkweed and the caterpillar will go through five different stages which are called instars and so they'll they'll shed and molt their skin each time and i don't know i see these chrysalids but there's i don't see any monarchs per se in here yeah but they're really interesting little creatures well they tell are us, they're very interesting what is, so what is that whole thing about? so that is the whole metamorphic stew going on in there where <laughs> The caterpillar almost turns inside out, unzips its skin, takes off its clothes. And the process of doing that, at least with a monarch, happens very, very quickly. Um, it happens in less than 60 seconds. Oh my gosh. But it'll, the monarch caterpillars will go find a place to hang from. They hang in a J shape and they'll do that for about 24 hours. And then they'll unzip their skin, turn it into a chrysalid and the monarch chrysalids will be stay that way for uh, 10, 10 days to maybe up to two weeks before they emerge as a butterfly. That is just absolutely amazing. Now, you have these actually in your house. Well, I do. I raise monarchs. I love raising <laughs> monarchs. I think it's one of the coolest things ever. I've turned so many people on to raising monarchs and I mean, it just is, it's just such joy. And everybody from children to People in their 90s are just blown away, and um, look at this guy. There's so many good, yeah, Isn't that good eye. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, I don't even have my glasses <coughs> on. That's pretty amazing. Oh my God, look at the color on that. And I know that there are some people thing. that actually use the metamorphosis of the butterfly to help children who are terminal to understand oh. about transformation and. Um, going beyond that's pretty cool that is pretty cool interesting I have wow just, i'm, I'm going to try not to I'm get tangled like, up here gosh i'm just like the, amazed at the difference like wing this monarch oh, wing no is, a little wing down there that's not good i guess somebody got stuck no <laughs> that's not good at all we don't want any stuck monarchs well sometimes you know it's like they live their life cycle and they go someplace Oh, Hang so, on a minute. Oh, got, I'm entangled in the tree. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm entangled in the hydrangea. Here we go. <laughs> so one thing we Death did want to talk hydrangea. about <laughs> is that the viceroy is actually the state um, butterfly of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. That's what's on the nature license plates here. And that's what we were looking at at the beginning. And well, no, those, no? that was a monarch. Oh, that, that was a monarch. Been, okay. In here, I don't think we have it. But this is a viceroy. Cool. And that's a monarch. Oh, cool. And the. They look very, very similar. Mm -hmm. This butterfly actually is a great example of Darwinian evolution. Why? Because these butterflies were once dark in color, like the they were black, but they knew somehow that the monarchs weren't getting eaten, so they, over thousands of years, they became orange. That's amazing. And if you ever see one and you're not sure, is that a monarch or is that a viceroy? I always think that, because you can see the smile kind of on the viceroys, that's one way. And also they're smaller. They tend to be smaller butterflies. And here are those two pharaoh spots um, on the monarchs. Yes. That indicates that that's a male. And I don't know, but I have been told by one of my, oh look, there's a caterpillar <laughs> on the, <laughs> look at this. I was there's just a about caterpillar to say on the signage. He's a little confused. He can't tell 2D from 3D. It's, it's, it's definitely not a. Look at uh, that. It's definitely not a monarch caterpillar, and I don't know what kind it is. But does every caterpillar turn into a butterfly? Kay? No, no. They're uh -huh. like. I mean, I don't. I'm just gonna put this guy back. Whoops! Oh. He jumped. <laughs> he, he made it. He's down there. Okay. He's good. He made it. He's good. <laughs> so it's make okay. sure we step away. That's good. Uh, I'm telling you what. This is an amazing lesson, and I think Kyle needs to come in here for just a second and talk a little I, bit about. I want to say this is an incredible exhibit. It it's is. like if you like butterflies at all, you've got to come see this. It's so much fun to be able to get up close and personal, because in the wild, you know, I mean, you see how dormant that these butterflies have been for us. But in the wild, they're they're much more aloof and elusive. Mm -hmm. Isn't so. that amazing? Melody Stacy, Sharon Brown, we appreciate you guys tuning in with us today. Sherry Davis and Tony Glor, Jay Jackson, Randy Coe, Lee Chotner. Kay Milam, uh, now what we consider to be probably the expert on butterflies, yeah. especially monarchs. 
world-renowned, internationally acclaimed, all true, and Kyle Shepard of the Louisville Zoo, who always is such a fabulous host whenever yes. we want to do Take It Thank From you. Tara here at the zoo. Tell us about the butterfly exhibit, Kyle, when we can come and see it. And uh, it's located just inside the zoo to the left. Yes, so it's free with zoo admission Good. or membership, and it is just across from the attics and the bongos. Uh, and it's about, a what is it, like a thousand square feet in here? It's like it's a greenhouse. It's incredible. Uh, all kinds of butterflies, monarchs, viceroy. I mean, it kind of rotates through the weeks. We are open through September 22nd, 21st, I'm sorry. And then on the 22nd, we do the Flutterfest, where we'll ask you to come out and help us tag them. Cool. We'll release them, and then we'll send them on their way to Mexico and get a report back, hopefully soon. And, uh, and then in October, this space, now this is less popular for most folks, but this space turns into an, a spider house. I know, know. it's yeah. awesome yeah. for it's Halloween. So cool. My favorite yeah. place. So now tell us a little bit about your movie, Kay, and when we can actually see it. You're in the- Well, I'm gonna tag on to one oh, thing yeah. here. Go ahead. I mean, one of the really cool things about being here are the plants as well. And if you're interested in creating a butterfly garden, just by coming in here and looking at the plants and seeing maybe which butterflies gravitate uh, toward what, you know, the, the lantana that I just saw here. There's a monarch Behind that just you. landed right there. So see, they have the signs here that you can see the things that are growing that's and see so cool. what colors they are and how they bloom and whether you think that that's something that might, you know, be really beautiful in your own garden. Absolutely. And we did that by design. We labeled everything because we knew people would want to know and we want to, we want to, you know, want folks to sort of um, plant what attracts butterflies because, I mean, butterflies make the world a beautiful place. They really butterflies do, do make the world a beautiful they place. They do, and what wonderful stories you tell in your film. It's still in the screening process because it's going for all of these wonderful awards. Just quickly, how many different awards have you already won, if you can remember them all? I, There's a slate I know of that them. we've been, we're an official selection into 10 different festivals. I think we've won five awards. That's I think pretty I, amazing. And so we're doing the film festival run right now. And just so people know, I can't screen the film publicly, but once we're able to, we're definitely coming back here yes, at the we zoo. <laughs> we're gonna film it, we're gonna screen it here. Um, hopefully we'll find distribution, whether that's um, with something like Amazon or Netflix, cool. don't know yet. Cool. Um, but we're doing the film festival run and, and next week we're part of the Flyover Film Festival that is the Louisville Film Society and also my fiscal sponsor. and. So we, um, we have three screenings. The first two sold out in record time. The city has given us so much love. I can't even believe it, I'm so grateful. Um, but they've added a third screening and tickets are available either um, on the Speed website under Louisville Films, uh, Flyover Film Festival or on the, the Louisville Film Society uh, website as well. I got mine on the Louisville Film Society website just today and that was lucky because uh, there are not very many tickets left so I encourage people to jump on it while you can. You don't <laughs> want to miss this film. Kyle, thank you for being a great well, host. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank Kay, you for thank coming. you for being a world-renowned expert on monarchs. And, yes. and, and one thing, I, if I could conclude with just this one thing that I would like to say. Absolutely. I mean, butterflies for me have been my calling, but I think right now there are so many different, whether it's creatures or humans, there's so many worthwhile endeavors, mm -hmm. right? And the world needs us now more than ever. And so whatever it is that you care about, whatever it is that you believe in, do something because it, it, it takes all of us in order to make a difference and make the world a better place. I like it. Awesome. Kay Milam, Kyle Shepard, thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Thanks for Perfect tuning in to girl. Take It From Tar. I love you guys. Yeah, thank awesome. You.